Hello everyone and welcome back to the uh, Havana uh, uh, Tournament of 1965. It is the fourth Capablanca Memorial Tournament. We are continuing with uh, uh, basically showing some games that Bobby Fischer played there uh, and this is a game from round five. We've seen a game from round one and round two, uh, especially that spectacular uh, victory against um, uh, former world champion Vasily Smyslov. Uh, so do check it out if you haven't seen that. I even have a playlist for this tournament. Uh, then games three and four ended in a draw for Fischer and now he faces a very strong Bulgarian Grandmaster Georgi Tringov, uh, who, uh, okay, this uh, uh, game was played in 1965, uh, he became an international master in 1962 and uh, grandmaster already in 1963, so he's been a grandmaster for uh, some two years at the time this game was played, so he's a uh, He's uh, very strong, uh, he knows his theory well, uh, he played in five world um, uh, student team championships and he also uh, represented Bulgaria in 12 uh, uh, Olympiads. There is also a very fun story um, about Tringo from, from a chess Olympiad that was played in 1972, uh, the year Bobby Fischer was fighting for his world chess championship title against Boris Paski. Uh, Tringo played uh, against none other than Viktor Korchnoi in the uh, 1972 chess Olympiad in Skopje and uh, it was uh, a really weird moment where I believe on move 41 uh, they had to uh, seal the move uh, as the, the games would be adjourned and then you have to seal the move and tomorrow when you uh, continue the game of course they check out which move you played but here uh, as I understand it there was a different rule before you uh, you just uh, wrote the move you wanted to play on your score sheet but here there was a special envelope where you have to uh, sort of uh, envelope the move uh, in order uh, you know for the other our better to take it out to the the other day the next day and then he would see what move you wanted to play and then you would play it but uh, Georgi did not want to do that it's not that he didn't know he just refused to do that he did it the way he always did it he just wrote the move on his score sheet and the next day when he showed up um, uh, it cost him the game and you know they did appeal for it but uh, you know the, the arbiter said I mean uh, rules are the rules uh, your, your game will be forfeited so, uh, tough luck for him, but, uh, you know, if the arbiter tells you something, just do it during a chess game. There, there's no really uh, any point in arguing there. Uh, so, that being said, uh, let's check it out. Uh, uh, Georgi has the white pieces and he opens with pawn to e4. Of course, you guys all know what Fischer replies to pawn to e4. He plays the Sicilian defense. Pawn to c5, knight to f3, d6, and now pawn to d4. We have captures, captures, knight to f6, knight to c3, and now pawn to a6. A knight of Sicilian by Bobby Fischer himself uh, truly does not get any better than this. And here we have bishop to g5, the top move even by today's standards. Uh, pawn to e6, and now pawn to f4. So, as if it were played in 2023. And Fischer, of course, goes for queen to b6, the poison pawn variation, going after the b2 pawn, which is... Um, well, sometimes it's uh, said to be uh, poisoned, uh, and it's it's a really weird word. I, I think I already discussed this once, but uh, if the pawn was poisoned, wouldn't it just die off? You know, if you just left it alone for some time, wouldn't it just die off of poison? Uh, wouldn't a better word for the pawn be poisonous pawn? Because, okay, if it's poisoned, you ingest it, you, you die of poisoning, and if you leave it alone, it still dies as it's poisoned. But if it's merely poisonous, then it can remain there for as long as the pawn wants, but only if you take it, uh, because, okay, in English, you take, take you say, take Take capture, for example, in Croatian, you will say you eat the pawn, uh, so it makes a bit more sense. But yeah, I, I always thought that it would be more appropriate for it to be a poisonous pawn rather than a poisoned pawn. I, don't, I could be wrong, I, I, it just sounds weird to me. But okay, uh, the poison pawn variation, queen to b6, and now queen to d2, of course, offering the poison pawn, and Fisher gladly accepts it. Queen captures on b2, rook to b1, and now queen to a3. And here we have pawn to e5. Now today, pawn to f5 is the most popular, then pawn to e5, then bishop captures on f6. Those are the three lines that are played uh, uh, in this poison pawn variation. Fisher opts for pawn to e5, and now we have d captures on e5, f captures, and Fisher just goes knight f to d7 and now uh, we have bishop to c4 now this is a fine move but it was last seen uh, in 2007 okay there are some games where white won some games uh, Alexei Shirov defeated Wang Hao with it also Rajabov defeated Karyakin with this bishop to c4 move uh, Stelfagen uh, tried to beat Anand with it but it didn't work out Anand defeated him uh, but it's not considered the best now 
nowadays uh, here Knight to e4 is considered best and there are some very nice games um, that were played here uh, sorry those games that I've mentioned followed with Knight to e4 as they are modern games of course not Bishop to c4 but here we have Bishop to c4 and like I said this uh, move was last seen played in 2007 so not considered uh, anything uh, special you can still like use it if you play the poison pawn against someone maybe in a blitz or in a bullet game maybe you can use it win some quick games uh, but other than that Knight to e4 should be played which uh, is something that Fisher knew even in those days uh, but okay Bishop to b4 by Fisher absolute strongest move of course you go after the knight here but easily parried uh, rook to b3 chases away the queen and now queen to a5 if you think okay this might be a good idea to trade off uh, uh, queens here not really because here rook captures on c3 is played and now your queen is still hanging and doesn't really matter where you put the queen uh, you don't really have good squares here of course you're not going to put it to f8 you might play uh let's say queen b2 now bishop captures on e6 and you have problems here of course you you cannot capture the bishop uh if you take uh, then just the rook captures on c8 and you uh, get destroyed the the bishop discovery uh, was very uh, very strong uh so after bishop captures you will have to play something like castles and then after castles let's say just castles and again not much to do here for black uh, point being that if the bishop is captured you simply play rook captures knight captures and now of course rook captures on c8 and there's no way for black to develop everything is completely broken here like if queen b1 check you can even play king f2 you don't really care about your king being on f2 here black is without a move here if some like queen to b6 okay now the knight cannot move uh queen to f4 and now if let's say queen to b4 guarding the knight here uh, again doesn't matter knight captures on e6 opens up a discovery on the queen Queen also attacks the knight three times and even if you trade queens captures captures uh you don't um, uh, have a way of uh, of playing this uh and even if uh yeah bishop captures even better uh then next move of course you can capture or if knight to d7 then the rook falls so you cannot play this so of course fisher knows this he plays queen to a5 doesn't touch the knight and now both players castle to safety we have castles castles and now uh the way to continue this is uh not something you'd think of at first the actual way to continue this is queen to f2 which looks stupid uh, well I have to say it as it, it does look stupid uh, because you, you've hung a knight on c3 but the knight cannot be captured and because the knight cannot be captured you see how strong this move is and then you will be able to move the knight to e4 and of course now you see that the attacking formation is very strong then the rook can be shifted over to, to the attack the knight comes to e4 just looking beautiful here but the point is why you can't capture on c3 is that now knight captures on e6 is just brilliant and uh, th there's uh, really no good reply here bishop to e1 is the only good reply here again if you don't know this it chances are you will not find it but point is after f captures and bishop captures you just get checkmated okay you have to give up the queen but it's not really a problem knight captures rook captures and you just get checkmated so after this castles move uh here a fisher's opponent uh georgi uh, played knight captures on e6 and okay it's a fine uh, peace sacrifice you will get two points you will get some sort of an attack for it but you are uh, it's fisher you are playing against so if you don't make every move an engine move you are not uh you know uh going through with this attack so captures captures with with check king to h8 and now rook captures on f8 now you cannot capture with the knight as the bishop here would fall as well so bishop has to go back now black's pieces are again a little bit passive and now queen to f4 and now uh what what can you do here uh fisher's position is completely winning but you have to be very very careful of course you can see that um uh, uh if the knight uh, uh well uh, doesn't get developed well then bishop captures on c6 will remove the defender of the bishop on f8 so how do you play this what's the only move that fisher has here that brings him advantage feel free to pause the video and win the game for fisher uh, while i give you a couple of seconds So uh, for those of you who were able to do it, congratulations on uh, finding this, uh, well, uh, w wonderful developing move. And for those of you who just want to enjoy the show, it is, of course, Knight to C6. So this is what Fisher played. And now, even though you can capture, it doesn't really matter because then the Rook defends the Bishop. And after this Knight to C6 move, okay, Queen of uh, Queen, Queen uh, 7 was attempted. Uh, and now just Queen to C5 with check. This um, not only delivers check, but also guards the Bishop on F8. So again, you don't have to worry about anything uh, weird here. And also the threat of checkmate, while is very nice, it won't really do all that much. 
king to h1 was played and now just knight to f6 guarding against checkmate on g8 so here bishop captures on c8 we have uh, knight captures on e5 first and actually svishnsug going after the white queen queen to e6 and now knight e to g4 and he was in this position on move 22 that uh, grandmaster georgi tringov resigned the game as there is nothing more to be done here too much stuff is hanging here the bishop here is hang hanging and if you try to stop that with something like bishop captures on b7 or you even try to uh, prevent some sort of a checkmate by by bringing the rook all the way to b1 uh doesn't really matter it, it all comes down to the same thing you are uh w within a smothered mate so knight to f2 check, king g1, knight h3 check, king h1, and even if queen to g1 check, you pick up the queen, knight to f2 will be checkmate. So this is, I mean, one of the lines, but pretty much whatever you play uh, ends really, really badly for uh, for Georgi. So yeah, another very nice game played by Fisher. Like I said, this is a game from round five. So for now, three wins, two draws. We'll see what happens in the rest of the tournament. And um, while I might not show all the games, I will show the more interesting ones. And here uh, you've seen just how uh, how strong Bobby Fisher was back then, how, how much he knew theory, how he knew here after, uh, of course, this knight captures an e6 move was played that it, it wasn't uh, going to work. And even that, uh, okay, bishop to c4, not the absolute best move, uh, like I said last time played in 2007 so uh you know not uh you know n not the best and of course fisher knew this if you don't continue to, with absolute best moves you will uh, get a worse position and then of course you will have to sacrifice the piece in order to justify your maybe worse position and maybe try and win uh with a little bit of luck but against fisher not today uh, so yeah, once again, really hope you guys enjoyed this uh, from the Capablanca Memorial Tournament of 1965. Uh, I would like to thank James Eugene Cashman, Brad Roth, BulletChestThriller.com, uh, John Malpass, and Phil Maltos for a contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot. I really appreciate it. As usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. Thank you for watching, and I will see you soon, continuing to check up on your wonderful suggestions and whatever else happens in the chess world. Uh, thank you all. I will see you soon, and have an excellent rest of your day.